Welcome to Potter's Plant-Based Adventures, and today we're going to be making a vegetarian Irish stew. I'm going to go ahead and get started and get our vegetables in the pot, and we're going to talk through it. Got a nice sizzle in there, preheated three tablespoons of oil. You could use canola oil, olive oil, really any neutral flavored oil you like. Grapeseed oil works well, also a healthy alternative. And once you put in there. So we added one medium onion that I diced in one inch uh, cubes. We've added five cloves of garlic, because I you know, love garlic, gotta have a lot of garlic oh, in there. I smell it. We added two stalks of celery that we washed and then cut. So you lay the stalks out and you wanna cut them, just slice them down uh, about a half an inch because we're making a stew. So you want some good sized vegetables in right. there so you have like a nice hearty stew. Uh, three carrots that we peeled, again, cut into large pieces. Uh, a pound of golden potatoes, wash, leave the skins on, they cut those in about pretty, one inch pieces. Yeah, they look very nice and golden. Yeah, so a good vegetable mix to get us started with. Oh, and Because we're getting up close to St. Patrick's Day. Is there garlic in here? There's five cloves. Okay. Five cloves so of garlic. Lots of garlic so St. Patrick's Day, a lot of people like to celebrate it. Some people go out to the bars. Some people make stuff at home. We're more of the at home at this point in time in our lives than we are we going, going out to the bars. Yeah, now with definitely. the kids, we're usually stay at home. Absolutely, yeah. And you know, Sarah, her maiden name is Strasburger, so it's 100% German. Very the, German. The Potter side, there's some Irish in there, about 25% Irish. So I appreciate some deer and some cabbage and potatoes. For St. Patrick's Day, so we're excited to get into that. And I'm never going to complain about it, so. Why don't you go ahead and give that a stir? Okay. So we're going to let these vegetables continue to cook mm. down. So Irish stew, let's think about some of the things that we need. We've got a lot of vegetables in there. Of course, we're going to add some beer to it. And uh, I was also going to want to have like that dark, rich broth that you're used to seeing uh, that brings a lot of depth of flavor, something that you can get in there with the spoon and sticks to the spoon and then maybe have a nice crunchy bread to serve with. Definitely, you gotta have that. We're big on serving our soups up with some crunchy bread here. Yes. So Sarah's stirring those up, then we're gonna talk about our seasoning that we're gonna add to this. So go ahead and sprinkle that over the vegetables and stir that in. All right. So let those continue to cook. Oh my gosh. The other thing you wanna think That's about- That's a lot of seasoning, you guys. When you put it in, there it looks like a lot of seasoning, but you gotta remember, you're seasoning potatoes, which suck up a lot of seasoning, right? That's a very good point. You gotta keep in mind those potatoes are gonna use up a ton of seasoning. So one of the things or tricks when you're making a soup or a sauce, if you get it too salty, is to put a piece of cut potato in it and it's gonna suck up some of that salt. That's one of the ways to Definitely. make your food less salty. So when you're using potatoes in something, you gotta increase the salt level. Yes. So we've also got cut cabbage, we've got our protein. I wanna talk a little bit about the protein because you have a lot of options you can do here. If you want to do something where you don't want to use a vegetarian or meat protein, you could use mushrooms. Those right. work really well. Uh, you, for here, we're doing a vegetarian protein, which we're using the Gardein Porkless Bites. So I'll just show you what the bag looks like here. The Porkless Bites, they have a beefless tips that I've used before that's really well. You can use seitan in this if you want. Uh, Ooh, wait, you haven't done the video about making your own seitan yet. I still got to show you how I make my seitan, and we have a lot of different variations of that. We'll get into it, but really whatever protein you want. For those meat eaters out there, obviously you can use some sort of beef tip that you would pre-cook off beforehand, and okay. the same thing here. I just have to show this off. Show off. You guys see, guys, the amount of spice and seasoning. It is really coating all these vegetables really nicely, so don't be afraid to properly season your veggies because these veggies are coated in seasoning. You can just see it and smell it in this dish already. It's really great. Yeah, and you need to keep in mind that we're seasoning uh, several quarts worth of soup here. Yes. So you need a good amount of seasoning. You don't want it to be bland. Definitely. Uh, we're, not, we're not having just plain old vegetable broth here. We're gonna go for that deep, rich flavor. This is an Irish stew, deep oh, yeah. and rich. So that's really the important part here. All right, so the next piece of this is we're gonna add in our cabbage. We have uh, a head of a cabbage that I quartered, and I took a quarter of the cabbage and I cut it up again. Did you say you quartered it or you Qu quartered it? Quartered it. Okay. Got to watch that because you know sometimes my voice just yeah, doesn't I quite just carry sure. very well. About one inch pieces. That's what we're looking at. Right. So one quarter of a head of cabbage. Take the core out of it. That core is good for your vegetable stock. So I have it sitting over here in my my veggie vegetable soup bowl. That's going to go in a future stock. Great. But this cabbage here that's chopped up is going to go into our stew right now. Yes, sir. You're going to stir that. You always put everything on the back uh, burner so that I have to really reach, don't you? Yeah, short 
micro problems here. <laughs> All right, so our cabbage is going in there. Uh, we're going to keep stirring that in. We've got several other ingredients that we're going to add. So the, uh, the vegetable protein is going to be one of our next pieces, but I want to get that in there. Let's talk about how we're going to get that dark, rich flavor because for vegetarians, we don't have that use of beef broth, right? Beef broth is usually that dark color that you're used to seeing that adds a lot of right. that caramelized, rich flavor to, uh, to your stews. We're not sauteing beef in the pan beforehand, so we're not... We're kind of at a disadvantage. Where are we going to get that browning part of it? There's a couple of different things we're going to use. One is the liquid aminos, Bragg's li liquid aminos. If you've seen this before, you could substitute this with Worcestershire sauce, a vegetarian one, because make sure you check the ingredients. A lot of times they have anchovies in it, uh, or soy sauce. Either one of those things will work as a substitute. But liquid aminos, I find to be fantastic. It's vegan. It's delicious. And then my secret ingredient that I use for a lot of soups and sauces when I need that caramelized, rich depth is Gravy Master. Now this is something I usually buy on Amazon. It's not as easy to find in stores these days, but it is a fantastic ingredient when you want to add that dark color and that we rich caramelized flavor. We always have flavor. Gravy Master in the house. He uses it for a lot of things and it is vegetarian, so. It is. Yeah, it's, it's a browning sauce. So a lot of people might not be aware of it, but for you vegetarians out there thinking like, Man, I really miss being able to eat French onion soup, right? That's one that our family loves. Love it. And, and I make it, and they're like, how did you get that to be like a restaurant? Well, gravy master. There you yes. go. All right, that cabbage is looking good in there. Looks great. We're going to dump in the protein. All right. You get that stirred in. So that's our pork bites. Good workout today. Yeah, we're going to really get the arms in there. We're going to keep this working. Hopefully you guys, everyone on here watching has some great plans for St. Patrick's Day as we're coming up close to that. Our plans are going to be eat, eating a lot of good food. Yes. Sitting around the house, eat food. There's nothing wrong with that. that was, that's kind of my favorite kind of holidays, really, is when we can sit around with family and eat. Yes. All right. So that's looking really good, Sarah. It is. So at this point, we're going to start adding in our liquid, but first our thickener. So there's a couple okay. of different routes you can go. You can do cornstarch or you can do flour. I've got four tablespoons of all-purpose flour. We're gonna sprinkle this in, and just like you know, Sarah, because you've done this for a few of my soups before, right. is once you put the flour in, stir that so it kind of coats everything exactly. in there. This is in, instead of using a roux. So if you were to make a roux, which is buttered flour, 50-50%, you melt the butter, you add in the flour, stir it in, cook that out a little bit, and then you would add that roux mixture into your soup to thicken it. Instead of that, I like to coat my vegetables that, once they've cooked down a little bit in the flour, yeah. and that acts as the roux. Another way you could do this... It's kind of an easier way. It's like a shortcut, right? Right. It's a little bit of a shortcut. Another way you could do it is with a cornstarch slurry, and that's taking cornstarch and water that you mix together. When I do that, make sure you run something through there to get the cornstarch to fully dissolve within the water, and you add a little bit of that at a time until you get the consistency you want within your stew. So those are looking really nice and coated. So we're going to go ahead and add in our vegetable stock. This is our homemade vegetable stock. Uh, i got two quarts here, so eight cups. And that's going to go just right in here, and that's going to help work with that flour and start to thicken up our soup. Oh, yeah. Yeah, looking there good. we go. Now it's going to get a little easier for you to stir. Yes, it is. Thank you. So our vegetable stock, that's where we save our vegetable scraps when we're cutting up things for meals throughout the week. And we put those scraps into a little bowl, our uh Stocks, stock scrap our, bowl. Our stock it's always bowl. sitting around, instead of a garbage bowl. So you can see I've got a lot of good things in here from making this, uh, prepping this dish here. We've got stems from our parsley. We've got end pieces from our carrots in here. I've got pieces of onion that have peeled off. This is all going to do uh, really well in making a nice flavorful stock for us to use in the future. So waste less. All right. All right, we've got our liquid we'll in there. there. I've got two tablespoons of fresh Italian parsley that I've chopped up. That's gonna go yeah. in. It's gonna add a nice little bit of color with those leaves throughout the stew. It's also gonna add some really good flavor. Parsley is something I continue to try to use more and more of in my soups. It has a nice fresh flavor to it that really lifts the flavor of the broth that you're using. <clears throat> See, I'm starting to get a little dry now, so it's probably a perfect time to add in our beer. Yeah, right? So typically a lot, a lot of recipes are gonna call for like a Guinness that you would use in that. But one thing vegetarians probably need to note is that Guinness is processed with fish oil, not vegetarian. 
Yeah. So but he was very disappointed when he found that out. Extremely disappointed. You could use a porter. You could use another type of stout beer that isn't processed with fish oil. Uh, I'm going to use Shinerbach. So really, oh, you're sticking with the Irish, though. Yeah, and there you go. Okay. So uh, anytime you can get a it's decent beer, sounds in Irish. Yeah, I don't know. It looks like it's made in Texas. We'll oh, go well. with that. A good beer. You want a good beer that you're going to put in there. So I'm going to put an entire bottle of beer. It's not dark as a Guinness, but it is an amber-colored beer, Ooh. and that'll cook out as we work. Look at the color change already, and though. It'll cook out as we yeah. as the, the soup reduces. And I always say that you shouldn't cook with anything you're not willing to drink. Right. So well, there you go. One you're for the soup. One for the chef. Now, you guys, I am not a beer drinker, mm. but I might be willing to give this a little try. How is it? It's very good. So, not a watered down beer at all. It has a really good amount of flavor. Again, when you when you're cooking with an alcohol, make sure you have. A good amount of flavor to it that you start with oh, nice. because it's going to come through in your soup. If you start with something that's too light, you're not going to taste it. So right. we want to make sure we taste stuff. And again, if you're not willing to drink it yourself, don't put it in your food. Right. That is a very nice beer, though. It mm. does have a good flavor to it. You're right. And always remember, I'm a big fan of one for the food and one for me. Yes. <laughs> one for the cook and one for the dish. All right. Now we're going to add our bay leaf. We have a nice big green bay leaf here. This is a California bay leaf that I'm using to see if you can see that. Uh, if, if you have smaller bay leaves, you can use two. Got a big one, so we're just gonna use one. Right. Put that in. Now a couple ingredients left to go. Our amino liquids to get that browning flavor. I'm gonna do a whole tablespoon of this. I feel like amino liquids have some, like they're good for you in some way too. Okay? Right, because if you think about the building blocks of protein, that's where you talk about your amino acids. So again, for some of us, who are for our vegetarians, we have those certain aminos that we're missing that are within the proteins that, uh, that we're eating because there's a lot of proteins we eat that aren't a full protein. We start to look for those other uh, supplements, and this is a good one, to start to uh, add to those blocks of protein that you're building out so you get that full, complete protein. So for those of you out there who are into dietrician type uh, information, you're working out regularly, this is a good product for you. Yes, definitely. And of course, our gravy master, we're going to drop in a full teaspoon of this, and that's going to really darken up this pump. Oh, I can't wait to see this. I've never actually yeah. watched you use it. Oh, yeah, I can tell. And I'll instantly add some Oh, dark. my goodness, yes. And it now it's looking it's a little more Irish stew ish. It is, that's for sure. It is. It's dark. So that's going to wow, cook down look at that color for taste. about two to three hours. It's going to thicken up as the potatoes and the flour and the starch from the vegetables all oh, cooked and we should have a nice deep rich I vegetarian irish stew and when when that's ready to go we're going to come back and we're going to plate it show you what it looks like and of course you got to try it definitely i'm already ready to try it the smell coming off of this is amazing you guys it's going to be delicious off to a good start all right yes. we'll be right back and we're back we finished up making our Irish vegetarian stew and we've cooked up a little bit of sourdough bread to put oh. with it and it's time to dive in. can't decide what I'm loving the smell of, the right. stew or the sourdough. Oh, it doesn't matter. They still haven't made smell-o-vision yet, but there it is. It's I still know. piping hot, delicious, full of vegetables. Still coats the spoon there. You could go a little bit thicker if you'd oh, like. Bring it back. You could bring, yeah, she's already ready to pick. You could add a little bit of uh, cornstarch slurry if you want to go a little thicker than this. But this is loaded up is with vegetables like and flavor. You still have big hunks of the cabbage and the protein. Look at that carrot in there. Oh mm. my gosh. Right? This is delicious. Logan, you want to give it a try? All right, come around. It's that deep, rich flavor that you expect in an Irish stew. It's got, it's, there's no beef in there. That's what blows me away. But that like caramelized or browning sauce that we put in there, the protein, the it's vegetables, the all the here. herbs, the salty and pepperiness is really good. I always like to take a nice piece of bread. So I've got our sourdough bread. Logan's giving it a try. What do you think, Logan? He's giving it two, two thumbs, thumbs up. up. All right. It is yum. But what's oh. really good about my favorite thing is to dip a little bread in there. 
Oh my gosh, the, the Get potatoes all those in there are soaked up there. all of that delicious flavor. All the potatoes are phenomenal. Mm. 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 It's so good. Oh wow, it, it is a very thick, rich flavor, definitely. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's fantastic. That beer's cooked out in there. Layers and layers of flavor. This is something you need to make sure you try. Add into your uh, dinner okay. menu when it comes to St. Patrick's Day. All right, so Thank you everybody for watching us. Before Logan goes, hey Logan, what do we tell our people on YouTube? So, make sure like, that... subscribe, and leave a comment below how you liked this video. Right? Very Thank good. you so much, Logan. That wraps up everything. and. We know there's a lot of great food out there in the world, whether you're out on the road trying to find it or right in your own kitchen. Remember to be safe and stay hungry. Bye, everybody.